Today, I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing this, the System76 launch keyboard. 100% open source, 10 keyless mechanical keyboard from System76. The launch keyboard is the first accessory made by System76 besides the Timbuktu laptop carrying bags. This keyboard has many things going for it, but primarily it's a 100% open source keyboard. Besides the keyboard running the open source QMK firmware, the configuration software used to remap keys is also open source. And System76 have also released the design files for the keyboard hardware itself including the printed circuit boards, the PCBs. Now that's open source. The launch features a high-speed USB hub and compatibility with Linux, Windows and macOS. It's also one of the first products I've seen in a long time that's not made in China, being manufactured in Colorado. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with products made in China, but it's actually nice to see something that was actually made elsewhere for, for, a, for a change. Now, one of the premier features of the keyboard is the build quality, being manufactured from solid milled aluminum, or aluminum, however you say that, uh, a magnetic lift bar, and rubber feet for stability. The launch keyboard is also very configurable using the keyboard configurator application. This allows you to remap keys, change LED colors, and change the keyboard layout as you please. Also, your configuration is saved to the keyboard itself, meaning you can easily take your keyboard with you and your settings will be available on any computer you use. The keyboard also features a layered configuration with the software allowing you to configure up to four layers, which you can switch between using the function keys by default. Out of the box, the keyboard comes configured with two layers, which you can then customize and you can add another two layers on top of those for a total of four. The customization capabilities extend to the keyboard hardware. Included with the keyboard is a combination keycap and key switch puller. This allows you to swap out the keys and key switches to your favorites. Extra keycaps are provided in different sizes, contours and colors with the keyboard itself, allowing you to customize the keyboard straight out of the box. This is also useful to swap the key location after making changes in the keyboard configurator. The launch keyboard is available with Kalih Royal switches for a muted click or Jade switches for an additive click. Your keyboard also acts as a high-speed USB hub. Uh, besides the USB-C port used to connect the keyboard to your system, two USB 3.1 Gen 2 USB-A and another two USB-C ports are provided for daisy chaining. Uh, the keyboard also features individually addressable RGB backlit keys, with keycaps manufactured of PBT plastic with a dye sublimated legend. So this is the box the launch keyboard comes in. Now one thing I really don't like about System76 is that they ship their products directly in the retail packaging, which means your box ends up being destroyed by all these shipping labels and UPS pouches and stuff like that. Now I understand that this could be to save the environment, you know, use less cardboard, which is, you know, fair enough, but it still results in an utterly destroyed box. Nevertheless, uh, speaking of the box, let's get it unboxed. So I'm gonna use my trusty ruler here to get the thing unboxed. There we go. And here we are. All right. So we get this ready for launch. Um, welcome. Welcome to the launch keyboard crew. We're happy to have you on board. Okay, and so basically some introduction. And it says download the configurator at s76.co slash configurator. Okay, fair enough. And some protective foam here. And this is the main event. The, oh, oh wow, wow, that's heavy. <laughs> that's a big, thick boy here, nice. 
it feels amazingly good. Uh, now before looking at the keyboard itself, let's also see what comes with it. And as you can see here in this very neat packaging, uh, there are some extra keys. So basically you can replace the keys on the keyboard with the ones that match your um, personal favorites. For example, you can change the cursor keys to these red ones, for example, or blue or whatever. I think blue would actually look pretty good with this. Uh, there's also the combination uh, keycap and key switch puller here. So I'll be showing you how easy it is to use this guy. Here there is a USB-A to USB-C cable uh, braided and this is a USB-C to USB-C cable so again you connect this uh, depending on your preference. Uh, it would probably be a good idea to connect the keyboard via USB-C to my Oryx Pro so then I would gain another two USB-C ports which is really really handy. Uh, and then the keys themselves and this here is the magnetic solid aluminum lift bar that you can use to angle your keyboard. So let's get it cleaned up here. Okay, so a little bit of a tour of the board itself. So you'll notice first of all the 10 keyless layout here and the default sort of retro inspired brown color scheme. Uh, you'll also notice the split space bar which is really quite interesting. And of course, using the configuration tool, you can map any one of these to another key. The idea here is that a split space bar is uh, more con consistent to tap with your thumb um, whilst you're typing. Um, now, if we look at the top of the keyboard itself, uh, you can see here that this is the USB-C port where you're meant to connect it to your computer. And then on either side, we have a USB-A and USB-C port. Uh, these are USB 3.1 Gen 2. Um, at the back, you can see here that there are screws. Uh, so, you know, this thing is easy to DIY on, should you wish to. Um, and the metal, I don't know how well this comes through in the video, but the aluminum here is quite shiny and has a nice, really nice milled aluminum effect. So this thing looks amazing. It's also really, really heavy and really, really solid. I mean, there is absolutely no way on earth that I am going to flex this thing at all. It, it's basically like a solid bar of metal. I mean, it's super, super solid. Now, this here is the magnetic lift bar, um, which angles the keyboard by 15 degrees. And being magnetic, all you basically have to do is, as you can see, there are these indentations here, and these go in the two rubber feet on the keyboard. So all you need to do is that and just like that i have a slight angle on my keyboard for a more comfortable typing experience well you know depending on whether you like using uh, angles or not whilst typing now being this hefty and having a metal construction i'm really eager to see what this sounds like so um whilst trying to navigate around my tripod i'm going to give you a tour well, um, a preview of the sound that these keys make. So I have the Kalich Royal switches. They are tactile. They sound really, really good without having that too annoying click and you can really tell when you've pressed the button because again, this thing is so solid, it really feels absolutely amazing to type on. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to my Oryx Pro and see what this looks like. Okay, so here we are on my System76 Oryx Pro. Now, of course, I've connected it to a System76 laptop here, but you can connect this to any Windows, Mac or Linux machine. Uh, as you can see, the RGB is in full swing here. I'll have to configure it since it's currently set to unicorn barf. But uh, let's go ahead and do a typing test. Uh, so I'm gonna open a new document here. And again, this is obviously, um, I still need to get used to this thing, but let's see how this goes.
Okay, so yeah, that went well. Um, it's a bit weird that the shift key is actually pressing enter and the enter key is actually pressing shift. That's kind of weird. So when I press enter, yeah, as you can see, I get capital letters. Uh, and when I press shift on my keyboard, I'm actually getting enter. So either these two were swapped out of the box or something's wrong here. I'm actually gonna open up the System76 page here for the launch keyboard and see whether this is the default configuration. Yeah, and as you can see here on the System76 website, it's supposed to be enter on top and shift at the bottom, which is how the thing is working. And yet on mine, I have shift on top and enter at the bottom, which is weird. <laughs> Luckily, it's easy to swap keys around. Uh, so that's something I'm going to have to do. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, it has the uh, shortcut key. So for example, if I press super here, I'll get the System76, uh, you know, search thingy. And so I can very easily open applications like that. Uh, there's control, alt and function keys as well. Um, so one thing I want to do is install the configurator. So according to this card here, I need to go to s76.co slash configurator. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So s76.co slash configurator. And nothing seems to be happening. Uh, okay, get configurator. This should be it. How to get the keyboard, download the app in the pop shop on Pop OS, download for other Linux distros, download for Mac, download for Windows. So Mac and Windows users have nothing to worry about, the configurator is also available. So in my case, I'm gonna get it from the pop shop. Keyboard configurator, install. Okay, so that seems to have installed. Now let's see, it should be in my applications menu. And yes, here it is. There we go. So as you can see, this is the configurator. Uh, and as you can see, I can configure both the built-in keyboard on my System76 laptop, as well as the launch keyboard, which is, you know, this thing here. Uh, so I'm gonna choose configure keyboard and as you can see up here there are the layers which I can configure so right now this is obviously layer one layer one is basically what you see printed on the keys themselves now if I switch to layer two uh, you can see that there are some function keys here for LED on LED off darken and brighten so for example here if I press function and I don't know nine wait yeah uh, function zero yeah that has turned off the LEDs uh, so ho hopefully if I press it again yeah okay the LEDs are back on and I should have volume up and down with yeah there you go page up and page down control the volume of the device now there is also layer three here, layer four. So as you can see, there is quite a lot that you can do here. Now by default, when I switch to layer two, the LEDs on the board actually light up for the keys which are configured, which is also always a good thing. Uh, so going back to layer one, for example, uh, let's say I don't really use caps and I want to remap this to escape. Okay, so I, I don't really use caps lock that much. I just hold down shift. So I'd much rather have a closer escape button. So I've selected caps here in the software and then I want to map this to escape. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So now if I press caps, yep, I should be pressing escape. So I can do this, press caps, yep. And that's now my escape key, which is pretty good. Um, so we can also control the LEDs here. So as, as you can see, there are a few patterns built in. Uh, the default is space time, uh, but I'm, I can change it to elements, for example. Oh, which is really quite a pretty effect indeed. Uh, let's see, disabled obviously disables it. Per layer, solid color. 
Okay, so you can set a color for each of your different layers to make it easier to figure out what layer you're on. Uh, per key, solid, and then obviously I can choose the keys. Uh, so for example, I can go to Q here, choose a red color, and that, yeah, that makes my Q key red. So you can configure the colors on each key individually. Uh, bound keys only, cosmic background, which, okay, kind of goes between several colors. Horizontal scan, okay, which is kind of like a wave effect, and obviously there's then vertical scan. Uh, event horizon, which is, wow, real unicorn. Binary galaxies, which is, oh my God, even more psychedelic. Pinwheel galaxy, yeah, okay, so yeah, there are quite a few. Uh, there are quite a few here. The nice one here is the Meteor Shower, which basically sends a wave of color through the keyboard whenever you are typing, which is really quite nice. Now you can remap keys to any combination. So for example, I use the one password password manager. And to activate the browser plugin on Firefox, you have to press Control full stop or Control period. And I'd like to be able to do that with just one key. So from the software, I can pick a key I'm not going to be using much, like uh, right Alt here. And I'm going to set it to instead be... Moments later. Now, I've been playing around with this configurator and apparently I can't do that. Uh, so as you can see here, I've selected the right Alt key uh, and I'm gonna bind it to Control period. So I click right Control, okay. But then when I click period, it switches to the other symbol. So I can't bind this to Control full stop, even if I try pressing Shift. Uh, so maybe I'm doing something wrong here, but somehow I doubt it. I'm pretty sure you could do it since QMK firmware supports this, but I, I, I'm thinking it can't be done from the configurator and you'd have to edit the firmware yourself, which does kind of suck. Uh, so maybe I'm doing something wrong. If I find something out later, I'll put a note down in the video description. But for now, I guess I'm gonna have to stick with one key per physical key. Okay, so let's actually uh, show how to uh, replace a key here. So as I told you earlier, uh, for some reason, my shift and enter keys are swapped. <laughs> uh, so I, I'll just put the included key puller here, uh, maybe on this direction, and just pull it out. And as you can see here, I have uh, the purple key switch, which means those are the Kalich uh, Royal, which are a bit quieter. Uh, they still offer a really nice tactile feel. Now, obviously, there's a key switch puller here as well. Um, so just to show you how to use this, again, you just put it here and then you pull up. And there you go, the switch comes out relatively easily. So it's very easy to replace the switches should you want to. Now in my case, I don't want to do that. So back goes the switch <clears throat> and I'll just get this enter key from here, pull it out and I'll swap the two keys around. So this now becomes enter, which is what it is configured to and this becomes shift. Now, whilst I'm here, I might as well replace some of the other keys. Uh, for example, I did remap the caps lock key to escape. So I can replace it with the included escape key. So again, I'll just pull up the caps key and replace it with escape. It really is that easy to do. And I guess for some fun, I can even replace the cursor keys here. Hmm. Looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. So, 
That's my review of the System76 launch keyboard. I really like this board. It has an extremely solid build quality and feels good to use. I'm no stranger to mechanical keyboards myself, as my current daily driver at work is an Ergodox. Now, sure, the launch is not as ergonomic as the Ergodox and supports fewer layers. However, to be honest, I only really use three layers on my Ergodox, which I can also do with the launch. And I really can't see the need for more layers than that, at least for me. And despite not being an orthogonal split keyboard, it's still a great board that's comfortable to use. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the System76 launch keyboard. Uh, and if you have, please give this video a like and Tech Guru a subscribe, as it really helps this channel. Also, if you can, I would appreciate if you could check out my Patreon page and consider supporting me financially. It helps me to buy the stuff I review in these videos, as well as the equipment I use to make the videos. And honestly, it, it really fills me with joy that I have a couple of Patreon subscribers already who find my content worth supporting financially. Again, thank you so much to you guys. Finally, remember I'm also on Odyssey, where you can watch my videos without using YouTube. Uh, that's all for now. I'll catch you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.